actually been involved with the genesis of what became the Homelessness Task Force uh, uh, when we had started to getting together as, as a small group of people to talk about homelessness issues and how to bring more of the community into the discussion about homelessness issues. And then uh, the task force was formed uh, formally by the City Council of Kansas City, Missouri um, about the time that the jail was closed and I retired. And so at the time that the task force was formed, why uh, they needed a, a, a staff person. So I um, uh, was hired at that time. Boy, that's a retirement. <laughs> <laughs> um, your golden years uh, exactly. went right back to work. Uh, <laughs> exactly. You know, um, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about what the task force is and what they're, what they're trying to do and, and who they're trying to include. Right, exactly. Well, uh, the task force has been meeting now for a year. Um, originally, we had about 30 members uh, from the city of Kansas City. Um, and one of our first chores, we had several things to do. Um, we had to do some fundraising, of course. Um, we had to organize ourselves, which we did into basically six issue areas uh, for subcommittees, which have also met monthly. Um, but uh, we also were charged with turning ourselves into a metropolitan task force. So we have spent a lot of time uh, in different counties in our area and uh, on both sides of the state line. So we are now actually have representatives from five different counties, uh, Jackson, Clay, and Platt in Missouri, and Johnson and Wyandotte in uh, Kansas. Uh, so we are now about 60 members. Um, but also we wanted to be not just uh, service providers or you know people like me who had work in, in a professional capacity with the homeless population, but really to bring in more people the philanthropical, philanthropic community, the medical community, the business community, uh, and, and uh, really uh, to help people uh, get over some of the myths of homelessness that, that so many people have. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the plan, and then I, I got another question for you okay. about the plan. All right, that's fine. Well, the, uh, the, the major task of the task force was to come up with a plan to end homelessness. Uh, which I think probably most people will agree might be a little bit optimistic, but, but we certainly would like to see that happen. Um, and uh, so the uh, six subcommittees plus the uh, executive committee have been meeting at least monthly um, and looking at areas as, as uh, uh, housing, of course, and services and financing and prevention and uh, oh, what am I forgetting here? Um, law enforcement and judicial, um, are, and advocacy and community relations. And so what we have been doing over this past year basically is fact finding and data gathering because we want to have a data based uh, report uh, to take back to the community. So we are now working on a draft um, and basically what we are looking at are the underlying trends that have happened in this country. Uh, over the past 30 years that have ended up with so many people uh, becoming homeless. Um, it's individuals, it's families, it's a youth, it's children. Uh, it, it hits all facets, basically, of life. And so there's, there's no single cause, uh, and there's certainly no single solution. It's a very complex problem with a lot of complex uh, uh, solutions, or, or at least attempts at, at solution. All right. Uh, what? Uh, when does the task force meet? You know, the, and uh, how would someone get involved with this process? Uh, uh, the full task force meetings are the fourth Friday of every month in the morning uh, at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and we meet at the Central Library on the fifth floor, uh, 14 West 10th Street. Uh, we have a website uh, and I maintain a mailing list um, and so our calendar of meetings is posted uh, both on our website and our Facebook page. Um, and all of our meetings are open and we really do encourage people to attend the meetings and not only, not to just come and listen to a bunch of people talking, but to really get involved because we are really looking for 
uh, different uh, ways of looking at the problem and different solutions that to be brought to us by everybody in the community. Well, I, I, I have to admit, um, and, and this is, uh, I guess, my disclaimer here, I, um, I am not a member of the, the committee or of the task force as such, but I, the very first meeting of the task force that I went to, um, I was looking at, you were presenting the, the basic structure of the plan and all, and, and I was able to stand up and say, well, you know, I don't see anything on there about raising food and, and right. gardens and right. that type of thing, which is a, a real good way for, for people to provide for themselves, and that, you know, also helps them create a, a little bit more, a better image of themselves. And um, it seems like when I went to a, a later meeting, I actually saw something in that plan that, that included some of that. And I was, I was kind of, oh, wow. <laughs> um, well, so we, we really are trying very hard to be inclusive and, and to have people participate because there's no point in, in you know, having the same old folks sit around and, and talking. One of the things that we're looking at uh, right now very carefully are the properties held by the Jackson County Land Trust. There are about 3,000 properties. Uh, they're sold, many of them very, very cheaply. Uh, many of them are not buildable, but uh, most of them are appropriate for community gardens and all kinds of things that could be real benefit to the neighborhood. Uh, the other, uh, uh, the other, uh, uh, the other uh, that could be part of the solution is the number of vacant properties uh, around that there's something like 12,000 properties in our area that are vacant houses. Those are primarily held by uh, the institutions which had the mortgages on them. There again is a very valuable asset uh, that over time, of course, as they sit vacant, uh, they deteriorate very quickly. And so the task force is certainly interested in finding ways to both maintain those properties uh, and then uh, to use them uh, to house homeless people. I mean, you know, we have people who need housing and we have housing that's available, so we need to uh, uh, learn how to match them up. Well, we've talked a, a little bit about the plan itself. Um, the next question, I guess, that comes to me when I, I look at the plan or, or look at, at how things happen is, you know, who will need to be part of the groups or the agencies or individuals that will be needed to make this plan work? You know, who, who is it out there that isn't involved yet that needs to get involved, that, that needs to know that, that their involvement is, is crucial? Well, one of the areas that we've worked on a little bit, but we haven't really, there are a couple of areas that we really haven't focused on. Um, one is the area of economic security, um, job training, um, and so we're trying, we've actually, um, uh, we're, we're uh, reorganizing, reorganizing some of our subcommittees and there is now going to be a committee on economic security and, and, uh, and community development. So we really need to bring more people in um, who have expertise in that area, the job training area. Um, because I think we could do a better job as a task force uh, in that area. We also, we have people uh, involved uh, from the medical community and the mental health community, uh, but I think we need to do a better job of bringing more of those folks to the table too. It's, it's all interrelated. There's not one root cause, there's not one, one solution. Um, people need houses to, to, they need to have their own place uh, in order to reach their potential in order to um, be able to maintain their health, to have regular health care, uh, transportation to get to you know, wherever they need to go for their appointments. So it's, it's really uh, a building a, a kind of a, a holistic uh, a view of, the, of this problem. 